everybody, this is Eric Worry, and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here with my buddy, Robert Hollis. How, How are you, doing, man? Uh, this guy and I have uh, known each other for a long time. Very he's, long time. He's earned millions of dollars in the network marketing profession. He's been hanging out with us at our GoPro Breakthrough event here in Las Vegas this weekend. So I thought we'd turn the cameras on and have a little conversation, talk about some success tips, talk about some things that you've done to be successful in your business. But to start, why don't you give everybody just a quick introduction by telling them your story. Where'd you come from and uh, what's it turned into? Sure. Um, again, I want to thank you very much for introducing me to all this. I mean, I'm just having a blast and I learn stuff from you all the time. Um, you know, me, I was just a classic guy that grew up in, in Williston, North Dakota, auto mechanic, and uh, just basically was good at being doing exactly what I was told to do. Um, you know, go out there and get good grades. I sort of messed up there and, and decided to go to a trade school because I didn't want to go to a normal school. And I got out of there, was a mechanic, and just started going to work and working hard. And it just seemed to be one of those things where I know that a lot of people, you get excited about, you know, getting your first job. And, and uh, I just put in extra hours and all the extra hours I put in wasn't around my family, but never, ever had enough money to be able to do the things I wanted to do. And I believe that bad things happen to people. And what happened to me, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, a van slipped off. I was so smart, I tried to stop it. <laughs> and it hurt my knee and I no longer was a mechanic. Hmm. And I just remember like it was yesterday, everybody talks about, I know you talk in your videos about this point where you just can't have your life that way anymore. And uh, my son, Robert Hollis Jr. now is doing great in, uh, uh, in the profession. Um, you know, I was driving home and I pulled over to the shoulder road and my son, you know, six, seven years old, looks at me and says, Dad, listen, you go up a couple more blocks and uh, turn left in our apartments on the left. And Eric, I just didn't know how to tell my son that I was hiding my car from the repo man. I, I just, I was, I've, I've never felt so unworthy and so worthless in my entire life is how did I get to this point? And I just didn't know how to lie to my son. I just, and I just said, you know, this is it. I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I believe that when you're, Mine's like a parachute, you know, when you finally let it work, it, it works. And, and uh, a friend called me and said, hey, listen, you got to come check out this guy. He's making 62 grand a month. I seen his check. And I thought, ah, this is crazy. And he says, no, he's looking for people to show you how to do this. And um, man, I said, I'll come pick you up. <laughs> and so I went and met this guy. And there's only two things that I thought that he could have to make him make that money. And one was, what did he do? And he said, well, before this, I installed car stereos. And I, I broke down tires on cars, and I went, wow, an auto mechanic smarter than someone that installs car stereos. <laughs> and then the other one was, uh, he, I asked him how long he's been doing it. And I didn't know that he just left another company. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, similar to his upline that you've had on your show, Jeff Roberti, mm -hmm. and just a wonderful guy. And, um, you know, so all of a sudden, you know, he's only been doing this for six months. And I was going like, I gotta, I got, I got, I gotta figure this out. I gotta hang around this guy, and I gotta just figure it out. And you know, the rest is history. That's 25, 26 years ago. 26 years ago, and then, and and talk about um, your early stages of building. Okay. Well, when I first got in, um, my upline was one of those individuals that did everything they could to keep me away from the people that knew what they were doing. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time because I didn't even know what network marketing was. I didn't know what even Amway was or any of this stuff. So he had me going out door to door, knocking on doors, telling people about water filters. You know, they remember the puppy dog deal, you know, mm -hmm. oh, try this out for a couple of days. It was and a water I, filter network marketing company a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, in our 20s, you know, we're all in our 20s, Lisa Grossman, Jeff Roberti, all of us in our 20s trying to figure out how to sell $5,000 worth of water filters. <laughs> and I was going door to door trying to sell these water filters. And, and uh, oh my God, it was so difficult. I just, ugh, I just went, this ain't for me, but I wanted to feed my son and I, I you know, I was a single parent. And I just said, I got, I got to figure this out. And so, um, you know, I just kept doing that and kept doing it and kept doing it and just nothing was working, just absolutely nothing. And um, all of a sudden, the guy that brought me in the business said I had to go to this event. I just had to. And I just went, man, I don't want to go to an event. I've had it with this thing. And so he said the classic line, if you don't go, I'm not working with you anymore. And I thought, wow, I'm still on work 
Sequence Comp, I gotta go. So I went there and everyone that walked across in front of the stage, I just disliked, it just made it worse. You know, cause all these people, oh my God, I'm making this kind of money. And I'm going like, oh, am I an idiot? Why can't I get this? I, it, it's like, this seems so easy. And this guy walked across the stage, and I apologize to the audience because it's my story, <laughs> but this guy walked across, he was Middle East, he, he uh, didn't speak uh, good English, and he just said, my name's Ahmad Mahad. I've been in company six months, I get second car, and building new home. I love this company, and I love this country, and I just wanted to beat the crap out of him. <laughs> 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 I was going like, why, why is he doing this, you know? So I waited respectfully after he got off stage. You know, when people get off stage, everybody wants to hug him and give him a, shake their hand, congratulate him. And I walked up to him and I shook his hand and that was one of the things you call as a significant emotional event. He looked at me right in the face and he, I said, tell me how to be successful. He goes, okay. You walk up to lots of people, lots of people, say, you wanna make money, yes, no. And I went, what? He goes, you ask people, do you wanna make money, yes, no. And I said, what if they ask you a question? He says, I look at him and I say, you answer my question first. You want to make money? Yes, no. And I went, okay, so yes. And then he says, then you tell your upline story. I tell him, hey, you got to meet Jeff. Give me your phone number. I introduce you to Jeff. Jeff is the money man. He make all the money. He show you how. And it clicked for me, Eric. It just went, I've been making this way too hard. I've been saying too much. I just got to get people in front of my mentor. Well, then I had a problem because he right away asked, well, who's your upline? I mentioned the guy's name. I won't say it. Mm -hmm. But I mentioned four or five people that knew that. I knew I was up the upline. And here they were involved in the company I was with. And this guy that just walked the stage didn't know who they were. And that's when it started to get on me. I finally mentioned my upline. And he goes, oh, I know her. You're with this guy. You know what I mean? I said, yeah. And he goes, you call company on Monday and tell them you want to talk to him. He'll call you. You work with him. You work with people that know what they're doing. And I didn't have any money whatsoever. I told him, he call, I called him up, uh, uh, called, he called me and said he was doing an event in San Diego. I lived in San Fernando Valley a couple hours away. And uh, I drove down there and I didn't tell anybody, but I was sleeping in my car. And I just went to, his, went to his seminar and he said, what are you doing Monday? And I said, whatever you want me to do. And he set me down and started showing me how to do an ad, how to go through the script, how to get people, how to work with those people. And man, my business spun fast, this is super back in the fast. This when a lot of people were running ads in the newspaper in order to be able to generate traffic, those yeah. types of things. Uh, that, that, those days are kind of gone, but... Uh, I agree. But, uh, but teaching the fundamentals. Absolutely. You got an in, into an incubator of learning. Immersed. You were immersed in how to build a business. Right. Um, being taught by somebody who knew what they were doing. So, uh, long story short, you kind of move forward. How much have you earned in your career in total in commissions? Just went over $43 million this year. $43 million in how many years? Uh, it's 26 years. 26 years, $43 million in commissions. Has anything gotten much beyond, do you want to make money, yes, no? <laughs> and you know, here I got something, somebody to introduce you to or somewhat, something to introduce you to? Um, no, I just believe that uh, there's a lot of things with technology and stuff that's made it easier. You know, uh, attending this breakthrough, I learn something every time I'm around you. Mm -hmm. uh, but this availability of doing these blitz with the Texas that you taught. Um, um, for those of some of you that are going to watch this, you just got to find a way to get around Eric and his training. I mean, the guy is not only very efficient in what he knows, but he's constantly being uh, introduced to all the top people all over the world. And Eric, just like this interview, is asking people, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Where are you getting your best results? And so I learn something every time I'm around you. I just really, really appreciate you. Well, tell people, you made $43 million. Somebody else might have not made $43. Right. What's the difference? What makes you special? <laughs> if anything makes me special, it was being upset that I wasn't learning fast enough. Um, I felt if other people were doing this, I could do this, but apparently they must have some knowledge that I don't. And I don't still to this day understand how people can be successful by getting the same training that happens every other Saturday, and it's the same training. 
you got to find people. And like I did, what made me special is getting around someone where I not only were taught what to do, but he showed me what to do. I got to watch him do it with other people. You know, this guy like you and me now has got stories after stories after stories of people that they found that didn't know nothing about this profession. They knew nothing on how to do it, but we showed them. They jumped into the 90-day blitz. They went to work. We helped them, and they got results. And once they got results, then you turn into crazy because it's like even if, I think we all agree that even when I got my first like $150 check you know that someone gave me for a water filter I remember that wow I got a check for something other than my job you know what I mean and then learning that I could help other people become successful really became a trip for me so one was learning totally that totally. separated you became a lifelong learner when other people didn't right okay what else what else makes you special what ma what makes you different than a person that isn't making the kind of money that you make. This is going to sound silly, but I'm very simple. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple. I don't understand that if I find someone like you that I can learn from, there's no need for me to change it at all. At all. I came from the racing industry, car industry, and I was telling some of your students here today in the breakthrough that if I was going to go into NASCAR tomorrow and I had the money to do it, I would just go to the guy that's won the last nine world championships and I would just say, can I just get all your stuff? Mm -hmm. I don't need to reinvent the wheel, come up with my own words and try to figure out a different way of doing it. So I'm the kind of guy that if someone's doing something that works, then why not just do that exactly the way they tell you, believe in the faith of the process and just work hard. So my mentor challenged me. He said, you know what? I bet you, you can't put 70 people in front of me in your first 30 days. Right. And I said, you're wrong. I'll do it. And it was 72. So that was the one that broke the momentum enough for me to receive a, a, over a $10,000 check in my first 45 days working with him, because that's what I considered the first time I went full time, because I had someone that showed me what I was doing. And, and of course, not to be misleading in any way, shape, or form, 5,000 of that had to be paid out in rebates, but it was the most money I've ever made. It was, mm -hmm. it was incredible. And having that check, I even, funny thing I did, I had a mechanic buddy, uh, David Wynn was his name, is Vietnamese, and I knew he had money. So I signed the check over to him. We went to the bank and he gave me cash because I wanted to show the check for 30 days until I got my next one. <laughs> but I needed the money to pay rent <laughs> right now. So, so talk, talk to me about, you wrote this book last year? Uh, yeah. How is that working for you? How is that working? How is that working? Yes. Um, so tell people why you wrote that book. Um, I, I had a lot of people that heard my background in my childhood, which was really awful. And uh, it definitely was a regs the richest story. So when people heard my whole story, um, and, you know, I now say that I, I went from auto mechanic to life mechanic. And uh, I, I, everyone kept saying, you got to write a book, you got to write a book, you got to write a book. And um, finally, I pushed a friend of mine to be an author. His name is Max Miller. And he said, all right, I'm going to be an author. And then the first book's going to be about you. And I was just like, what? So you know, as I, as I did, you, you just gotta do and review, you know what I mean? You just, gotta, you just gotta start doing it, and we started doing the audio and then put the book together. And I was still blown away. I'm still blown away today with the success of that book. It's really humbling for me um, because I just wanted it to be uh, someone that someone could read and it would inspire them to be an entrepreneur. And still to this day, my, the, the best uh, testimonial I have to it is my 20-year-old. Uh, he's 22 now. And he read the book. His name's Matthew. And he said, Dad, I'll read your book. I'll read your book. You know, and I'm going, okay. And he came back down and he looked at me and he said, uh, Dad, I know I can be an entrepreneur. I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I just went, if that's all I got out of the book, I'm done. <laughs> and believe it or not, the second interview I got uh, was from Eric Ory. Oh, yeah, so he grabbed it on Kindle before it even was in printed form and read it on a trip from, you know, uh, 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 I think you were over in Norway or something and, and read it and, and right away did a, a book review for me right away, which was just ah, so incredible for me. Yeah, Thank you. Super fun. You should get your hands on it. I'll put the link uh, to the book below. Get your hands on the book. It's very good. Um, you're going to be speaking at GoPro Recruiting Mastery. I am? Yes, you no. are. <laughs> Don't surprise me like that. Uh, GoPro Recruiting <laughs> Mastery, this November 20th through the 23rd. The who's who of everywhere in network marketing is going to be there. You're going to be one of the trainers. Talk to people who maybe haven't made the decision um, to be there yet. Okay. 
Uh, what would the, be the benefit? Why should they go? Well, th this will be my third. Uh, my third. And uh, Eric being the guy who was, I, I was at an event with you and you said, hey, come down, you know, be on the panel. And uh, I spoke on the panel. I think that was the first time that Eric heard from me because uh, we've been really good friends in the last three years that he didn't know that he was one of my virtual mentors. Um, uh, when I left the company that we were with, he was like one of the, the guys that was training for another electronics company. Mm -hmm. um, and I just watched everything thing he did. And he, of course, he didn't know that I did that, but I let him know that on stage. Um, then the next year, he was nice enough to invite me, which was last year, to speak. And here's what I tell everybody, and please, please, I'm not trying to be inoffensive in any way, but there's this craziness out there that the only people that you can learn from are the people that are your direct upline or are people that are above that. It's not saying anything negative about them, but like Bob Proctor in the interview that you said, you know, you can't lead someone to a place you've never been. And there's two kinds of documentation that people need to understand. One, it's okay to be a documented person that's made 10, 15,000 a month, but those people rarely have the documentation of helping somebody get to that same income. And so what you got to do is you, it's your responsibility to find someone that knows how to do that. And so what I've done my whole life, which a lot of people think I'm genius and I made all this money, I've helped, you know, 44 people now make over a million a year, is I'm just really good at finding people that know the information and then making sure the rest of my team get in front of that person. You know, humble yourself and don't allow you know, people above you to say, listen, you only can learn from me. And and the other thing is, you know, then I started learning from cross-line people in my own company, and all of a sudden my upline's mad. The people above that, you know, they get hurt. Their, their emotions are crushed. I can't, you know, why can't you learn? But then when you start going outside of your company, it's like super taboo. And I'm going, think about this for a second. And, and many times for good reason, because yeah. you, know, you don't want the distractions. It's got to be a safe environment. It's, it's got to be a safe, correct. And so, but think of this. If, if I go learn from Eric and I get around a bunch of people that he's put together that know, like, and trust him and know that it's a, a, a safe area, then I'm going to learn the knowledge to make more volume in the company that I'm working for. I'm also going to make the people that are qualified above me more money. So wouldn't they want me to learn from the people? Well, here's what egos do, E-G-O, edging God out. That's what I say all the time, is that now that I've learned the information from Eric, I'm gonna not tell people where I got it, and I'm gonna go, go back and teach my little people you know, how to do it. Wrong. Why not take everybody that I know and put them in front of the person, expert from afar, uh, you and I were laughing about this. I don't know why it is, but Eric and I was talking about you're teaching the people exactly what they need to know, and then you get them to an event like GoPro, you know, Recruiting Mastery, and then the person looks at you and goes, you know, if I heard this stuff before, I would have been successful already. And you just want to beat them up because you go, that's the same stuff I've been telling you all along. But familiarity breeds contempt, and sometimes they're not listening to you, and maybe you made a, made a mistake and went out and got drunk with them a couple of times. <laughs> and, 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 and you did stuff where they're like looking at you, oh, Robert again. But when I get all my people in front of Eric, they leave there and they're on fire. They know what to do. They say, now I got the information that I need, and I got a big grin on my face. They're going to go back home. They're going to produce what they've always wanted to, and that just generates and rakes advancements. It also generates more income for the team. It allows people to go full time faster, right. and, and it's a safe environment. So I'm looking forward to not only uh, speaking again, but learning from the other people that yeah, you got there. And I mean, this event is just going to be so huge. It's going to be fun. You you got to be there. You just got to get there. Well, Robert, you're the man. Uh, he's been hanging out and, and sharing wisdom with the, the group of people with it here at at the breakthrough event um, here in Las Vegas. And if you have if you want to check out what that's about. The next ones aren't available till early next year, January, February, March. Uh, you spend three days with us and uh, hang out at our house and and uh, learn how to do better. Have a have a breakthrough. Absolutely. And uh, for the, everybody else, get to Recruiting Mastery, uh, get Robert's book, uh, continue to learn, continue to grow. And our wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.